Hello YouTube and fellow DC Comic fans, I'm Keith OneShot, and this is my Comic Complete Dramatic Reading Series, and today we will be covering Dark Days The Forge from DC Comics, all art, text, characters, and storylines belong to DC Comics and their respective owners, not me. If you enjoy these stories, feel free to go out and support DC Comics in your local comic book shop. We start the story off in ancient Egypt, where we see a group of people riding through the desert at night, chasing after something in a rush. We then read journal entries from Carter Hall, in which Carter says... There's a feeling you get at the beginning of an adventure. You feel it in your veins, the channels, your heart starts pounding, beating only for discovery. My name is Carter Hall, and this is my final journal. I have lived many lives, but I still remember that night like it was yesterday. A young boy had spied something in the sky, a light, and we rode out together. My princess, my advisor, our guards, to see what it was. We feel it in the air. The start of something big, something was coming, something wondrous. A message from the gods, perhaps. A sign, but it was no sign. It was a clue to the greatest mystery in the history of humankind, and it was written in metal. We then see in the sky, a falling bird-like spaceship on a crash course with Earth, and Carter Hall and his people are there just in time to be there as it crashes. We are then brought to the Bermuda Triangle in the present day, where we see a volcano erupting, and the scientist is at a nearby base, going over important research on the volcano, and the scientist says, I stayed to protect what we just learned. I keep reading and rereading the data, hoping it comes together, hoping that what I saw wasn't true. There's something, there's something wrong with the Earth's core. There's something in the metal. We then see metal claws covered in lava break through the walls of the volcano, and it turns out to be Batman inside of a huge metal exo bat suit. Batman opens up the exo suit and reaches out his hand to the scientist as he says to him, Dr. Madison, the only way out is through the volcano. Get in! Dr. Madison is shocked as he says, B -b 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 Batman! We then see Batman and the doctor in the Batman exo suit going through the volcano. As the doctor panics, the suit sounds an alarm that says, Pressure mounting! Batman then says, Compensate! We just need to break through into the open ocean! The suit then sends out another arm that says, Temperature surpassing safe levels. Suit will not hold. Batman then screams, I said compensate, damn it! We then hear a loud, Krakatoo! As we see lava blast into the ocean. Then we see Aquaman and a few of his dolphin friends, swimming towards Batman to help. Aquaman then says while he's swimming, I see them! As Aquaman gets to Batman and Dr. Madison, Batman says to Aquaman, Aquaman, get him to the surface! Aquaman replies, What about you? Batman then says, I need to retrieve the data card for my pressure suit. To which Aquaman replies, The lava flow will consume that behemoth in seconds. Leave it! Then Batman swims towards the pressure suit. As he says, I can't! Then he retrieves the data card and says, There! We then see Aquaman on the beach, as Batman walks out of the ocean and says to Aquaman, The others! To which Aquaman replies, My friends are pulling them to the shore now! No casualties! Batman then says, Thank you, Aquaman! Then Aquaman says to Batman, Batman, this was a Wayne Enterprise black site, an off-the-books drilling operation, in my ocean? Aquaman then continues to say to Batman, You weren't just keeping this place hidden from the surface world, you were keeping it hidden from Atlantis, from me! What are you looking for, Bruce? Batman then tells Aquaman, With what I know is locked underneath Atlantis, is that really a question you want to ask me? What we need to be asking is simpler than that, Arthur. What are they hiding? We then see a person sending a message. He can look all he wants, but he won't find out. Lady Blackhawk to control. Bring me home. We then jump over to the planet Mogo, where we see the Guardian Ganthet with Green Lantern Hal Jordan. And Ganthet says, Hal Jordan from Earth, I am temporarily pulling you from active duty. I have a private mission for you of paramount importance. This mission must remain secret from your fellow Lanterns, particularly your fellow Earthmen. Hal Jordan then replies by saying, This isn't going to be one of those happy secret missions, is it, Ganthet? Then Ganthet tells Hal, There are rumblings in every corner of the universe, whispers of a stirring in the dark. A terrible truth is coming to the light on your planet. Then Hal tells Ganthet, Wait, these are the coordinates? This is the source of the threat? Ganthet then asks, Is there a problem, Hal Jordan? We then see Hal take off and fly to Earth as he's heading to the coordinates Ganthet gave him, which is the location of Wayne Manor in Gotham City. Then Hal says, No, no, no problem at all. We then see Hal Jordan enter the Batcave, and Hal says to himself, There's more spooky crap in this place every time I visit. Alright, let's find what's got Ganthet's robe in a bunch and get the hell out of this mausoleum. Then, suddenly, out of nowhere, we see Duke Thomas kick Hal Jordan in the face and say to Hal, I don't think so. Sorry, Green Lantern. I'm on strict orders from Batman. No one is allowed in the cave right now. Not even family. We then see Hal Jordan grab a hold of Duke with a green energy construct. Then Hal says, Yeah, that's not suspicious at all. Then Duke says, Thought I read that little ring of yours. Doesn't work on yellow. Then Hal replies, It does if you know what you're doing. To which Duke replies, That doesn't make any sense. We then see Hal Jordan scanning the Batcave, as it seems like he's looking for something. Then Hal jokes to Duke, Glad to see Batman still recruiting teenagers. You're new, aren't you? What's your name? Yellow Robin? Canary? Big Bird? Then Duke says, All you need to know is that Batman left me here with a job to do, and that if you don't get out of here right now, you're gonna regret it. Hal Jordan then says to Duke, Aw, oh, you're doing the voice and everything. Seriously, kid, what's your name? Then Duke answers, Duke Thomas. I don't have a code name yet. What are you doing? Then Hal puts his hand on the wall of the Batcave and tells Duke, Scanning for something. 
There! And it seems like Hal Jordan has activated a button in the Batcave. Then we see Hal Jordan enter the wall. Now that Duke is free from the energy contract, he chases after Green Lantern and says, Hey! Come back here! We then go to a place called the campus, which is located one mile beneath Philadelphia. We see two men both wearing cloaks, looking at a vision of a woman. The woman they're watching screams, Die! 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 Then one of the cloaked men says, her name is Elaine Thomas. The second cloaked man then says, She seems like a charma. Then the first man says, She was once, before the Joker's toxins ripped her mind apart, before her son Duke had moved into Wayne Manor. I had made her an offer many years ago, an offer to join a secret battle that stretched back to the dawn of time, an offer to live forever. The second cloaked man then says, She didn't take you up on it, I'm guessing, so why is the great and powerful immortal man walking down memory lane? Then the immortal man says, Miss Thomas reactivated briefly a few weeks ago. I've been monitoring to make sure she hasn't revealed anything to anyone she shouldn't, but she remains incapable of divulging our secrets, no matter how hard the Batman pries. We needn't worry about her. The immortal man then goes on to say, Our secrecy is paramount to our success. The world of public heroes is careening towards a crisis unlike anything they've seen before, and it will be up to the immortal men to preserve mankind's future if any of us survive long enough to see it. Then, we see images of Hawkman and Hawkgirl during their many battles as we hear Carter Hall narrate a passage from his journal. From that night on, that fateful night in the Egyptian desert, my story is well known. The ship was made of a mysterious substance called Nymph Metal. It gave me and my wife and our mortal enemy Hatsat eternal life, sending us into a cycle of reincarnation. Shahar and I fighting on the side of good, Hatsat on that of evil. We were born hundreds, even thousands of times over, each cast against each other. But the truth is, sometimes in those dark moments, those moments in between lives, before being born again, I would catch a glimpse. Glimpses of something bigger, a mystery beyond our lives, our story. Something terrifying. Something on a scale I'd never seen before. A dream. No, not a dream. A nightmare echoing through the metal. We then see a glimpse of Carter Hall's vision, and what seems like a giant statue of Batman, made of metal, standing in a destroyed city, with bat signals shining down around it. Carter Hall wakes up from his nightmare, then he looks at his mace, then he reads a passage from his journal that says, So I began following a mystery of my own. Something I told no one about. Not until now. Here in these pages. A mystery that would take me places I never dreamed. We then see Batman in the present day, at his lunar Batcave on the moon. Batman is standing on a green light, then he says, Computer, send a message to Lucius. Black Sight 14 is down. I want Sight 15 up and running within the week. Keep this one away from the ocean. Batman then places something in the computer, as he says, Create an uplink to the Shadow Drive, adding new geological data for comparisons. We then hear a voice say to Batman, So it was as bad as you thought it would be. Then Batman throws a few batarangs, and they hit Mr. Terrific's T-Spears. As it turns out, he was the voice. Mr. Terrific then grabs one of his T-Spears, and says to Batman, Hey, what did my T-Spears ever do to you? To which Batman answers, Throw off the calibration of my computers. I didn't realize you were back in our universe, Michael. Mr. Terrific then says to Batman, This mystery of yours has made me a little queasy about crossing back and forth. It seemed time I came home for good, but Mr. Terrific always keeps his promises. Here's all the data I could gather from the other world. Then Batman says, Have you told anyone what we've been working on? On either Earth? Mr. Terrific then shows Batman his jacket, as he says, I didn't put fair play on my jacket for laughs. I know what's at stake when the Batman comes and says he needs a second set of eyes to help see the big picture. You don't break that trust. Batman and Mr. Terrific then sit down at the computer, as Batman says, And now how big is that picture looking? To which Mr. Terrific replies by saying, I'll be honest, Batman. I have an IQ of 179, and I have no idea what any of this means. The frequency that's being generated across the world is growing stronger, but it's not steady at all. It seems random, like a compass spinning wildly out of control. Batman then says, Huh. Then he walks down a set of stairs in his lunar Batcave. Mr. Terrific follows and says to Batman, That just sparked something, didn't it? There's nothing I know of on this Earth that could get you a clear reading on that data. It would take something massive, something practically cosmic on scale. Then Batman says, Yes, it will. And where it leads me, there may be no coming back. And Michael, I'm going to need you to do something while I follow this path to the end. I've already extracted the molecules I needed from his body. We all agreed he was too unstable, that there was no ends to what he would do if we weren't careful. But I'm going to need him for what comes next. It's time to let him out of the box. Mr. Terrific smiles and says, You damn right it is. The two then walk into a room, where we see an egg-shaped thing being held in a cryostate. And if you don't know the symbol, it's Plastic Man! We then go back to the Batcave on Earth, in Gotham City, with Hal Jordan and Duke Thomas. Green Lantern shines his ring into the dark of the cave, and says to Duke, Seriously, only Batman would have a secret cave inside his secret cave! Then Duke says, I told you, we're not supposed to be here! Hal Jordan looks around and says, What is this place? Then a voice answers, Oh, I can clear that up for you. Then Hal turns to Duke, and Duke says, Don't look at me, I didn't say anything. Then Hal Jordan says, Ring, how many life signatures ahead? And the ring tells Hal, Cannot reply, interference. Hal then looks at his ring and says, This doesn't make any sense. The voice then answers again by saying, It wouldn't, would it? A mystery never does at first. Duke then says, Mystery! Alfred, is that you? The voice then says, Oh yes, our friend with the pointy ears has been following it for years. It all started with a tooth, a metal tooth, that could bring the dead back to life. 
the bedrock of an organization that stretched back centuries. Duke then says, The Court of All, right, Dick? I mean, if you're not Alfred, you have to be. The voice then goes on to tell Duke and Hal Jordan, You see, a metal shouldn't be able to do what Electrium could do. No compound of silver and gold could make the dead talons walk again. And so, Batman had his thread, and he pulled, and he extracted something from the metal. A strange substance he had never seen before. A metal that science couldn't explain. The Green Lantern then grabs his hand in pain, and Duke says, What's wrong? Then Hal Jordan tells Duke, My ring is burning! The voice then tells him, Oh, you can feel it, can't you? The power! So could he, and it consumed him! What was his strange metal? What's his connection to the Owls? Why did it share an energy signature with so many of the most powerful artifacts on the planets? We then see the mask of Naboo, which was once worn by Dr. Fate, an Elanian trident, and a pair of Amazonian bracelets. Then we hear the voice speak again. So we formed the first team, the first of many who were tasked with investigating all of this, a team that can move outside of Batman's influences. Together, these outsiders would operate without the knowledge of the Justice League, the government, or even his precious Bat family, uncovering more hidden truths about the metal. Then, Duke and Hal are shown images of Batman's outsiders, where we see Metamorpho, Batman, Black Lightning, Katana, Halo, and Geoforce. Duke then says, wait a minute, Batman has a Black Ops team? Then Green Lantern says, something's really wrong in here. I've been to every corner of the universe, and my ring's never done this before. We should fall back. We then hear the voice say, Oh, no, 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 no. You can't do that. I've been dying for a chance to see you both face to face. We're all connected, you see. I was hoping someone would come meddling, and I've been so lonely down here. We then hear Duke say, Look, I'm done kidding around. We're talking about Batman. You think I don't know he has secrets? If he's been putting together some kind of mystery for years, and he hasn't told me, he has a reason. Then the voice replies to Duke by saying, Oh, you can't turn back now. The next bit's the best part. It has all to do with the liquid metal, shimmering in green. A metal that changed everything. They called it Dinesium. But he wasn't the only one who found it, was he? Duke then shouts in fear. No! Then Green Lantern yells. What the hell's going on in here? Who are you? Then the voice says... Oh, I think he's starting to put the pieces together, just like I did. You see, he was dragged into this world for a reason. The same reason, I'm sure, your celestial boss has sent you digging for answers. Because Batman is getting closer to the truth. Hal then says, show yourself. Then Hal tries to use his ring, and it says, cannot comply. Anomaly detected. Then Hal says to Duke, my arm's on fire. Let's go back to the cave. I can bring in the league. Something's very wrong here. Duke then says, no, we keep going. The voice then says to Hal, Oh, Mr. Green Lantern, are you afraid? Then Hal says, I don't get afraid. The voice then says, Oh, I think you do. I think we all do. It's in that very moment of discovery, when you're about to learn something you will never be able to unlearn. Something that puts all the pieces together, and you finally see the truth, and the world changes, and you know it will never go back to the way it was before. But if you're so very brave, then open the door. We then go to Egypt, where we see Carter Hall looking at artifacts, as we hear readings from his journal, in which Carter says, You don't even realize it when it's happening. One minute you're following the clues, and the next, they're pointing you forward, dragging you. I studied this metal alone for years, trying to unlock the secrets of his abilities. What I came to understand was that it was conducting energy, powerful energy, from somewhere beyond my understanding. I dug deeper, followed every clue I could find, until one day, I got a glimpse. A glimpse of a story that began with the first man to walk to Earth. Three tribes, or rather, four. We then see Carter Hall looking at three tablets. The first has a picture of a bird, the second is of a bear, and the third is a wolf. Then Carter finds a secret fourth tablet, and on it we see the image of a bat. We then see that Carter is in an Egyptian palace, surrounded by ancient treasure and a Thanisgarian ship. We then hear a reading from Carter Hall's journal, in which he reads, And something else. I was a part of something bigger, something beyond my control, and I would do anything in my power to uncover what had been taken from me, the secret that stretched back to the dawn of my species, no matter what the cost. We then see Batman flying his jet over the Arctic Circle, where he lands at the Fortress of Solitude. Batman walks up to a door in the ice and yells, Quark! I know you're in there! Let me in! Superman opens up his door and greets Batman by saying with a smile, You know it wouldn't kill you to say please every now and then. Batman walks in and says to Quark, I think it actually might. Superman then says, What's wrong, Bruce? You look worried. Your heart's racing. And Batman answers, I'm fine. Then Superman says with concern, Bruce! Then Batman tells Quark, There's a room you gave me, years ago, deep under the fortress. I asked you to never look what I put inside. Then Quark tells Bruce, And I never have, once. Batman then says, I told you that the day would come, that I would need to open that door, and that I would need to walk through it alone. Then Superman says, Bruce, if this is too big for you, I'm right here. You know that, don't you? Then Batman replies, I do. Thank you, I do. It won't be long now. I'm not trying to keep people away this time. I swear, that's not what I'm doing. I just need to understand what I'm looking at first. Superman then says to Batman with a serious look, I've seen that door, Bruce. There's nothing from this world that could open it. Then we see Mr. Miracle in the Fortress of Solitude, and he says to Superman, I think that's why he called me. 
We then see Mr. Miracle, Superman, and Batman all standing at the steps of the door. And Mr. Miracle says, you built a secret room at the top of the world with one door and a lock that no human could ever unlock. What do you do with the key? Then Batman tells him, I shot it into the sun. Then Mr. Miracle says, that's a joke, right? Right? Then Batman says, can you open it? Then we see Mr. Miracle fly up to the door as he says, they don't call me Mr. Miracle for nothing. We then see sparks fly from the door as it begins to open. Then Mr. Miracle says, Batman, that can't be what I think it is. You can't have been stupid enough to hold on to. Then Batman says, thank you, Scott. That'll be all. Mr. Miracle then opens up a portal as he warns Batman by saying, Batman, whatever has brought you here, you need to turn back now. Then Batman says, that'll be all. Then we hear a loud boom as Mr. Miracle leaves. We then hear Carter Hall narrate a passage from his journal. I wish I could go back to that moment and warn myself. I write this journal for anyone foolish enough to pick up my trial. Whatever you do, do not follow in my footsteps. We then see that behind Batman's door, that's deep inside the Fortress of Solitude, is the Anti-Monitor's Machine from Crisis on Infinite Earths. Then Batman walks up to it as he says, Like a compass, computer, run all vibrational data through the tower. We should be able to track the exact dimensional frequency of the dark energy. The computer says, receiving data. Then Batman says, it's time then. Time to see what's in the dark, once and for all. Then we hear a passage from Carter Hall Journal, in which he says, I beg of you, whoever might be reading this, however many generations might have passed, do not follow the mysteries of the metal. Some mysteries are best unsolved. Some doors best left unopened, because through them, all you'll find is horror. We then go back to Duke Thomas and Hal Jordan, who are deep within the secret part of the Batcave, as Hal says, Batman, what the hell have you gotten yourself into? Then, the unknown voice says to them, oh, I can tell you that. Then we see, at the end of the path, that the unknown voice belongs to the Joker, and he says to Duke and Hal, this is a mystery that stretches back to the dawn of time. It's bigger than all of us. It's sure as hell bigger than you. You don't understand. It was all a cruel joke. You're just another couple of pieces in Batman's puzzle, just like me. Ha 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 ha! And with the evil laughter of the Joker, that ends the story of Dark Days, The Forge. Comic published by DC Comics. All rights, story, and characters belong to DC Comics and their respective owners. Not me. This has been Dark Days, The Forge. And I'm your host, Keith OneShot. If you like this video, make sure to check out the rest of my Comic Complete Dramatic Reading series. And support DC Comics by picking up a copy of the Trades and Single Issue Comics. Support your local comic book shop. Take care and have a great day. Goodbye.